You know why English is confusing? Because native English speakers don't even use it correctly. It's case in point. Here are some phrases and vocabulary words that commonly are mispronounced or misused. Case in point. The thing is, I don't blame anyone because it's so difficult to hear the difference between correct and incorrect. And of course, a lot of our communication, I would say the majority of our communication is spoken and not written on a day-to-day -day basis, right? You're talking to people. I mean, of course, you know, more and more we're texting each other, emailing each other. But these kind of phrases are more conversational, I would say, than uh, you would write in an email. So anyway, case in point, it's often uh, said case and point or written case and point, but that's incorrect. It's case in point. For example, um, my family, you know, people in my family lived to a ripe old age. Case in point, my grandma lived to 100 years old. So as an example, for example, por ejemplo, case in point, same meaning. Could care less and couldn't care less. I could care less, that's incorrect. The correct way to say it is I couldn't care less. For example, I'm not really that interested in sports. I couldn't care less who wins the Super Bowl. This next one, I had to look up. I don't believe it, but it's true. Irregardless, is a word and it's commonly in use, but it means the same thing as regardless. So I don't really understand why you would add the extra syllables, but they're both correct, apparently. Literally, people use this word for things that are not literal. Literal means exact, not a hyperbole, not a metaphor, literally. And then people will say something that's totally exaggerated. Like literally, it was raining cats and dogs. No, it wasn't, that's impossible. Another thing coming, not another think coming, if you're gonna write this one out. If she thinks that she's gonna get away with it, she has another thing coming. Uh, she's got another thing coming is also another common way to say this, but it's not probably the most correct. But again, common versus correct. You should know the difference and then make the decision for yourself. How do you want to communicate? For all intensive purposes, this is incorrect. For all intents and purposes. But again, we say these words quickly and it sounds like the word intensive. When you use this phrase, for all intents and purposes, it means like for all general meaningful parts. It's a doggy dog world. If you listened to the Snoop Dogg song where they're singing this, definitely it's confusing. It's a doggy dog world, but it's actually dog eat dog world. So that means that it's kind of a vicious uh, world out there. So be careful. And the last one, beckon call. It's not beckon, to beckon is to call someone to come to you. Beck and call. To be at someone's beck and call means you're ready to respond to them or to serve them immediately. You're just waiting. Uh, so if someone says, you know, he's at her beck and call, it means like he is waiting on the edge of his chair, holding his breath for her to, you know, ask for something. Okay, so there's probably a lot more phrases. If you can think of any more, please share them in the comments. And again, remember, correct versus common. This is just for informational purposes, and you can decide how you want to speak English. There will be no test at the end. This is just for us to learn and grow together because that's what we're about here at Go Natural English. I'm your American English teacher, Gabby, and I hope you enjoyed this series. If you missed any of the other mistake videos, spelling, grammar, phrases, pronunciation, then check out the links in the description or the comments. I will link them up somewhere in there so you don't miss any mistakes. And one final thought before I leave is about mistakes because I think mistakes are a good thing. If you're making mistakes, it means you're trying new things. So, you know, today is a great day to make more mistakes. Try new things in English 
And just remember, you can always correct yourself. You can always keep improving. Just try to improve a little bit each day, each time you use a word or a phrase or you know a structure that you're not sure about. Take the extra second to look it up or minute or however long it takes. And then the next time you use it, you can make that choice. Do you want to use it correctly or do you want to use it how you were using it? And I think that's really empowering. So, all right, that's all for now. Mwah. Bye.